What's up, everybody? Nick O'Dwyer back for the 10th inning with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw the great Joe DiMaggio just add to his streak for what would be the last game, hitting in his 56th consecutive game. We don't have anything quite like that today. We actually have him failing to get a hit for the first time in those 56 straight games. But we also have some Wimbledons to talk about, as well as some Tour de France's to get into. So if y'all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. This Day in Sports History. We start out at Wimbledon today in 1882 at the men's final. Defending champion William Renshaw would defeat his twin brother, Ernest Renshaw. Kind of the same thing we saw in yesterday's episode when he would defeat him in 1893. This time though, 6-1, 2-6, 4-6, 6-2, This would be the second of six straight Wimbledon titles for William and the second of seven overall Grand Slam singles titles for William. Three years later, we remain at Wimbledon in 1885, moved to the women's side. Defending champion in only the second Wimbledon women's final, Maud Watson would defeat Blanche Bingley Hilliard 6 1, 7 5, for a second of two majors. One year later in 1886, on the women's side, Blanche Bingley Hilliard would this time get the championship after defeating two time champion Maud Watson 6 3, 6 3, to win her first of six Wimbledon championships and her first of six majors. We move to cricket in 1893, and Arthur Shrewsbury becomes the first player to score 1,000 runs in Test cricket history. Back to Wimbledon the same year, 1893, on the men's side, Joshua Pym wins his first of two straight Wimbledon titles after defeating defending champion Wilfred Baddeley 3-6, 6-1, 6-3, 6-2. One year later in 1894, we stay with Pym on the men's side. Pym would once again defeat Wilfred Baddeley 10-8, 6-2, 8-6 to win his second and final major of his career. We stay in 1894, but we move to the women's side. Blanche Bingley Hilliard would defeat Edith Austin 6-1, 6-1 to win her third of six Wimbledon single titles. Now we move into the 20th century, move to Major League Baseball in 1924, St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Jesse Haynes would no-hit the Boston Braves in a 5-0 victory in which 9 innings pitch, 3 walks allowed, 5 strikeouts on the day. Three years later in 1927 at the 21st Tour de France, Nicolas Franz would claim his first of two consecutive victories by a whopping 1 hour, 48 minutes, and 21 seconds from runner-up Maurice de Wale. This would be Franz's first of two titles in the Tour. Back to Major League Baseball though in 1934, Four days after hitting his 700th home run, Babe Ruth would now have another first, drawing his 2,000th base on balls in the game against Cleveland. Babe Ruth is only one of four players to have 2,000 walks in his career, and he would finish with 2,062 base on balls in his career. Now we go to golf in 1939 at the PGA Championship. The 1938 Masters champion, Henry Picard, would win his second and final major title, defeating Byron Nelsie after a birdie on the 37th hole. Back to Major League Baseball, but as we already said, you know what it is. 1941, New York Yankees Joe DiMaggio's 56 game hit and streak would come to an end in Cleveland. 1955 now, at the first edition of the LPGA Championship, Beverly Hansen with a score of 5 under would win 3 strokes ahead of Louis Suggs to win her first of 3 majors. Now we move back to the Tour de France in 1960 at the 47th edition, Gaston Nencini would win and this would be his only Tour title. 14 years later in Major League Baseball, 1974, Bob Gibson would become only the second pitcher at that time to strike out 3,000 batters. With this strikeout of Cesar Geronimo, Gibson became the first player since 1923 when Walter Johnson did it to have 3,000 strikeouts. Now, there are 18 members in that club. We move up two years to 1976, and we have something involving the Olympics. At the 21st edition of the Modern Olympic Games in Montreal, 25 African teams, later rising to 33 nations, would boycott the games due to the IOC not banning New Zealand after they went on a rugby tour of South Africa. But we move back to golf in 1983 at the British Open, 
Tom Watson, with a score of 9 under, would win his 5th Open Championship and 2nd consecutive, one stroke ahead of runners-up Andy Bean and Hale Irwin. This not only would be Watson's 2nd consecutive Open victory, but this would be his 3rd victory in the last 4 Opens and his 8th and final major of his career. Move up a decade to 1993 and we have a world record by Graham Obrey when he bicycled in 1 hour, because that's the world record, 51,596 kilometers. Back to the British Open in 1994, Nick Price, with a score of 12 under, would win the second of three majors in his career, one stroke ahead of runner-up Jesper Parnevik. At the same time the Open Championship was happening, the FIFA World Cup was going on in California, and Brazil would defeat Italy 3-2 on penalties after the score was tied 0-0 after extra time. In penalties, Italy would miss their first shot, their fourth shot, and their fifth shot, and Brazil would end up making their second, third, and fourth, giving them the victory and giving them their fourth World Cup title. Just over a decade now, in 2005 at the British Open, Tiger Woods, with a score of 14 under, would win his 10th major of 15 overall, wire to wire, five shots ahead of runner-up Colin Montgomery. Now, for anyone who doesn't know out there, wire to wire means you never gave up the lead. You were in the lead since round one, round two, round three, and round four. Also in 2005, at the Canadian Open on the women's side, Mina Lee, with a score of nine under, would win one stroke ahead of runner-up Catherine Hull. We move up six years later, and we have two events. First, in 2011, at the FIFA World Cup Women's Final, Japan would defeat the USA 3-1 on penalties after fighting it out 2-2 on extra time. In the game, Alex Morgan started off the scoring for the U.S. in the 69th minute. Twelve minutes later, Ayamiyama scored in the 81st minute, tying it up 1-1. Then extra time came. Abby Wambach looked like she had the game-winning goal in the 104th minute for the U.S. Homer Esawa set not so quick, though. In the 117th minute, she tied it back up 2-2. The game ended up going to penalty kicks, and the USA just choked it. The U.S. ended up missing their first three penalty kicks. And then Abby Wambach would score on the fourth penalty kick, but it was already too late. Japan would miss their second kick, but they made the first, third, and fourth shot, giving them a 3-1 lead and the victory for their only World Cup title. Also in 2011, at the British Open, Darren Clark, with a score of 5 under, would win his only major title, three strokes ahead of runners-up Dustin Johnson and Phil Mickelson. Move up five years to 2016, stay at the British Open, Henrik Stenson would become the first Scandinavian man to win a major title after shooting a final round 63 to tie a major under par record and aggregate score record at 20 under par and a 264 aggregate record winning three strokes ahead of runner-up Phil Mickelson. This is the only major for Stenson in his career, but in the aggregate score, Brooks Kepka would later tie it in 2018 and in the under par score, Stenson would tie Jason Day, who did it the previous year. Finally, in 2018, in the WNBA, center Liz Cambage would score 53 points, setting a new WNBA record for most points scored in a single game, as the Dallas Wings would defeat the New York Liberty 104-87. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, let me know down in the comment section. If I mispronounce any names, I do apologize. I hope everybody out there is having a great day. I will see you tomorrow for Nick Wire and the 10th inning. See ya.